The new Elgato products have just been released and so in this video I'm going to share with you my humble opinions for what they're worth. Hello and welcome to Take One Tech. My name's Alec. And so, yes, in this video, it's uh, nothing uh, <laughs> nothing of great substance. I'm not going to share any tutorials and I'm not going to give you any hands-on because I'm stuck over here in Thailand where uh, these products aren't even actually available yet from their Elgato store. But nevertheless, I do obviously have my own little opinions of them. Uh, and so you may be interested to hear them or maybe not. <laughs> so I totally understand if not. <laughs> but anyway, let's get on with the, uh, the overview of what's been released and uh, perhaps start with one of my favorites the uh, stream deck uh, unfortunately the 500 key stream deck was not released that I was hoping for <laughs> what I want is really a desk that is just entirely stream deck buttons with four legs and a little space for my mouse and then I would be a happy bunny but anyway that didn't come but what they have done is they've updated the original stream deck so the original 15 key stream deck was released and then sometime later they released the XL version with 32 keys and the mini uh, version with 6 keys and uh, those had a couple of uh, upgrades really from the original version in terms of the actual casing and housing for it so perhaps it's easy if I show you the uh, Stream Deck XL, you can see it has got this uh, quite sturdy back case to it, or back stand rather, and that enables you to either have the Stream Deck sitting flat on the desk, or you can have it clipped onto the uh, the stand so it's more angled upwards. The uh, cable management, uh, you have got a little hole in the back of it, so, oops, sorry, just knocked the mic stand. The, uh, the cable can come out of the back. I tend to have it at the side because for these demos and things, I always seem to be pulling it on and off the stand so it is quite nice the way it just sort of clips on with the uh, the magnets like that so uh, the original and by the way the uh, six key version has a similar sort of sturdy stand as well uh, but the original version uh, the stand on that was never really that good it was a sort of um, plastic kickstand and uh, it always felt to me a little bit uh, subpar and not really in line with the quality uh, the build quality of the rest of the product but what they've done now is they've actually uh, ratified uh, ratifi rectified <laughs> I was going to say ratified then um, rat ratified anything but they have rectified that issue <laughs> with uh, the latest stream deck and they call in that stream deck mark 2 so the XL and the Mini remain unchanged, but the Stream Deck Mark II has basically updated the original 15 key Stream Deck to be more in line with the uh, the rest of the range. So you can see here it has got a more of a solid uh, base to it. One thing to note though is that you have the uh, uh, the back like this, and then the cover fits uh, sits over the top of it, and the Stream Deck module itself sort of sits inside which is a little bit different to this one uh, the XL where the whole front of it comes off in one piece and then that sits on the desk uh, so uh, yes this one seems to have more of a sort of cover around it with the stream deck sitting inside the unit if you see what I mean uh, but one of the reasons for that is they do provide different covers uh, and if I come back up you can see that they've got these different colored uh, covers that you can have for your stream deck personally um, a bit of a uh, sort of all black <laughs> sort of guy so I like all of uh, the things to just uh, blend in on the desk but nevertheless I can see for the target market for the stream deck which is for the uh, sort of gaming and live streaming market uh, there is probably a going to be quite a big demand for these things I already know some people who have got their eye on some of these overlays already uh, now I can't quite figure out if the actual overlays themselves are um, replace that entire front panel so this front panel that goes on the top of here or whether they are some sort of stickers I suspect it is the whole panel that is replaced but that makes me wonder um, if you aren't using it on the actual stand you want it flat on the desk do these covers still fit over it or how does that work but I'm purely speculating here. I don't know. I don't have one in my hands. <laughs> the uh, the price of it though is uh, just the same as the old one, so one hundred and fifty dollars. And the uh, the the covers I think are pretty reasonably reasonably priced at just ten dollars. I can imagine some companies maybe. Uh, uh, for want of a better word, <laughs> shafting their customers and charging exorbitant prices for these sorts of uh, uh, overlays to personalize them. I think $10 is probably quite reasonable, really, if indeed it is the full plastic frontage uh, that is being replaced. Um, so, yeah, we'll uh, we'll see about that and see how they uh, they are in the, in the real world. Uh, but if you have uh, recently bought a Stream Deck, uh, an original Stream Deck 15 key, um, if you still got time to return it, you may want to return it and swap it out for one of these ones because uh, the uh, the stand on these is certainly a lot more sturdy in my opinion. 
Apart from that, I don't think anything much has changed in the internals. It's still the same old Stream Deck that we know and love. So on the uh, Stream Deck page, it's basically going to start to, uh, oh, here you can see another one of those wrappers. Uh, and yes, you could make buttons to match, I'm sure. And uh, yeah, but all of the rest of the stuff is your standard screen flow. Here you can see a couple more of these covers. And uh, yeah, they do look nice when everything's all matching, doesn't it? So uh, if uh, palm trees and pink flamingos is your thing, then they've got you covered as well. <laughs> uh, but yeah, it, it, it does look uh, it does look really good. So the rest of this is all pretty much the same old uh, Stream Deck stuff. So on the this particular page. Uh, so let's go and move on now to the next thing which was announced, which was uh, the Wave XLR, which is a microphone uh, interface. And uh, this is actually uh, quite a neat little product, uh, if, I, if you ask me. <laughs> um, it is uh, sits on the desk. It's the same size as the Stream Deck, so the uh, Stream Deck Mark II. So it will fit very nicely uh, next to it on the desk. And what this allows you to do is plug in a uh, an XLR microphone, and then you've got some control on here. So... Uh, the little uh, buttons at the top bottom, you can see there's a sort of uh, microphone icon, wait, if it's stopped moving, <laughs> a headphone icon, and then uh, you've basically got another one that you can adjust the mix. So this big dial, you can basically adjust the gain of the mic, you can adjust the volume in the uh, monitors, and then you can also adjust the uh, the sort of the balance between the uh, the monitor and the, uh, the the sound that you're getting back as well. Uh, the sort of system audio and the, the sound so uh, that's quite good it's also got some uh, uh, sort of limiter and things built into it as well so it's quite good and then at the back you can see here so you can set the input gain adjust uh, just the volume and uh, crossfade between the mic and the pc mix so i think what i just said <laughs> uh, but it's also got a mute button on the back a capacitive center now i use the shore mv7 and that's pretty much got these sorts of things built into it it's not quite as uh, tactile as a dial uh, it's here it's got a touch sensor that i can change the um uh, the uh, the balance the uh, crossfade between the system audio and the mic and then i can also adjust the sort of gain and things like that on it but uh, it's uh, i'm never really as much of a fan for anything that's capacitive touch as opposed to a nice big uh, big dial so uh, but in any case i could use this uh, microphone with this uh, uh, product because i could take the xlr out from my shore mb7 and have it go into that um but i'll probably won't bother because <laughs> I'm quite happy with what's going on in terms of the signal processing that I get from the Shure Motive app at the moment and I think when I do eventually go down the full XLR route and uh, take advantage of the XLR out that I've got on my uh, my MV7 I'll probably be going into something like a Rodecaster Pro or something like that but nevertheless I do think that this is really quite a nice product and for somebody who's in the uh, total sort of Elgato ecosystem as well it does look very nice it's nice to have things matching isn't it <laughs> um now, Elgato do make their own range of microphones, the Wave mics, but uh, you can use this for any. So you could use it for your, uh, uh, well, like I say, you could use it for the Shure MV7, you could use it for the Rode Pod mic, you could use it for the uh, Shure SM7B or any other XLR mic for that point, from that point of view. So it is a really nice little product. And as you can see, it all nicely matches with the, the rest of the Elgato range. And that's where you plug in the XLR uh, input. And then this one is your headphone out. And then you've also got one here, USB, that goes into your computer. So it allows to, allows you to uh, connect your uh, XLR mic into your um, into your computer. And by the way, that is obviously another great selling point. Is when I bought my MV7, part of the reason was I didn't uh, necessarily at the time want to have a big bulky thing if I wanted to be mobile with it and this certainly would mean that you've got an audio interface that you can be a little bit more mobile with you're not exactly going to take it to a coffee shop with you let's face it but <laughs> it's certainly a lot less bulky for a Rodecaster Pro if you are just sort of having a single input and want to uh, use an XLR mic so uh, yeah great product uh, this one is uh, $160 uh, all of these prices just deduct one cent, by the way. It's $159.99, but it's $160, isn't it? So <laughs> uh, so there you go. And uh, they've also got the same sort of covers that you can have for the other ones. So that's a really nice, uh, nice, nice customization that you can have to it. And there it is sitting on a desk. And there they're illustrating the fact that it works with the Shure SM7B. So nice to see that rather than them just putting it into one of their own microphones. It does uh, show you the uh, point. And uh, yeah, the other thing that it does is it does this uh, clipping. So it actually uh, uh, will sort of limit the sound and so on. Uh, I'm not an audiophile, so I wouldn't be able to tell you as to how good a job it does of that. Uh, I do know when something sounds good or not, but I'm not sure about the technical. 
<laughs> but don't tell anybody I told you that. Uh, and then, uh, yeah, they've got their Wavelink um, product, which is basically a way to control um, uh, their microphones, their, all their uh, Wave microphones. And so it just obviously works in with that as well. So as I say, I can see how it's nice to have things all in a uh, into, into one ecosystem. And that would uh, now allow you then to control the uh, levels of any other XLR mic. Because at the moment, the Wavelink only works with the Wave microphones. Uh, but now that you've got this Wave XLR interface, it means that any... Uh, uh, any mic that you've got will work with that. And one other thing about that is this uh, this uh, Wavelink uh, app um, also integrates, obviously, seamlessly with Stream Deck as well. So it would enable you to control these things from the Stream Deck. So that's uh, another good feature of it. So this is probably one that I am not necessarily uh, craving <laughs> at the moment, uh, but it is a very good product nonetheless. I wonder if, oh, there we go. They've got a product, a picture of it there right next to the Stream Deck. And you can see it's pretty much the same size, isn't it? So it certainly does look uh, quite pretty on the desk, I think, anyway. So let's have a look at the uh, next thing. And this is one that I'm, uh, well, there's two mic arms, basically, that I'm quite interested in. The first one, if I come over here, is uh, a sort of more traditional style uh, boom arm, although it does look very nice indeed. Uh, so it's fitting to the desk and then sort of comes up with a, uh, 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 a joint in the middle and then coming out. So it is a sort of traditional style of microphone, albeit they've got their own uh, Elgato design flair to it. And uh, the other thing I like about this is it has got some nice cable management. So it's actually got grooves that run along the sort of top and back of the uh, boom arms and then some little magnetic uh, covers that just snap into place. So it does mean that you can route your cables, uh, whatever those may be. And uh, I think this looks looks really quite uh, quite nice. Uh, but the way I have my microphone set up is uh, I don't personally like it where you have microphones hanging down in front of your face. I think uh, it sort of blocks uh, a lot of the uh, the view. Not that anyone particularly would be worried if I blocked up some of my face. <laughs> but I think it, do it does look a little bit uh, intrusive to me. Uh, so I tend to like my, my uh, microphone sort of underslung, if you like. And I can probably show you how I set mine up because I kind of... Uh, uh, bit of a MacGyver job to uh, rig this up but if I just quickly show you what I uh, did if I get my phone cam up so uh, where's my phone camera gone there we go so I've got my Shure MV7 whoops it's a bit squeaky <laughs> got my Shure MV7 here and it's on a boom arm just one of the cheap sort of $15 boom arms that you can get from uh, from Amazon or whatever but then I have that going across here and you can see that it is actually uh, flat but it is at an angle above uh, sorry it's horizontal <laughs> above my desk. Uh, and I've actually got that attached to a little bracket that I made. There's my little MacGyver kit in my toolbox down there. And that is attached to this cupboard at the side of me. And the reason for that is that, uh, in fact, you probably heard it then. If I were to uh, tap on the table beneath me, you don't really hear that through the microphone. Whereas if I tap on the actual cupboard that it's attached to then you can hear that that is coming through a lot more uh, and this allows me to uh, move this out of the way it even allows me to fold it completely out of the way like that <laughs> and uh, so yeah this this just means that it's sort of slung underneath me but at the same time it's totally off the desk and I can still reach my stream deck and my keyboard and so on so that is the way that I have my uh, uh, my uh, my microphone set up uh, because as I say, I've never been a fan of those those arm mics that are sort of hanging down in front of you, uh, no matter how pretty they actually look. There is some really quite good ones that you can get that are kind of low slung on the desk that imitate this uh, sort of setup that I've got. Uh, when I say imitate, I'm trying to imitate them. <laughs> but um, they tend to be quite pricey, really, uh, for what they are. And I can't really justify spending something like that on a microphone uh, stand really where the, the stand is almost uh, a lot more than the microphone itself so uh, it's not been something that I've been too interested in however there is the new uh, Elgato microphone stand so we've seen this one but they've also got the uh, mic arm LP which is a low profile mic arm and this is basically exactly what I've been trying to uh, trying to do because what it does is it is basically clamps to the desk but it is a as you can see a low profile arm that swings out and then it's got this secondary sort of boom part of it that lifts up and down so this would be doing exactly what I'm trying to do with this arm except this is a much more elegant solution uh, I think so um, it's also got the same sort of cable management in uh, just so that you know you can do cable management uh, on the cheap as well <laughs> 
let me show you my cable management so here you go here's my cables and i've just got some of this curly black uh, plastic the sort of cable management stuff and then my cables come out here and they go there so that is <laughs> that is my low budget uh, cable management but this looks a lot more elegant and i think that this may well be going into my shopping cart at some point in the future uh, if and when it becomes or when it becomes available in uh, in thailand because it does look uh, quite good the only potential problem with this is that it is still connected to to the uh, the desk so you will still possibly get that issue of a sort of transmission of noise so if I could tap on my desk here or tap on the desk that the mics tap uh, attached to I'm not sure about the sound transmission obviously in this video uh, they have the uh, the wave mic and they've got the uh, sort of anti uh, shock mount for the wave mic in fact I can probably show you what that looks like as well while we're here uh, so the uh, little uh, cradle that it sits in uh, so the wave shock mount so this is for their their own uh, wave 3 microphone to sit in so they've got uh, they've got obviously that there so that would reduce the vibration but i'm not sure how it would work with this uh, this arm in terms of the vibration when it's attached to the desk i always like to keep the microphone off the desk if uh, if at all possible but uh, yeah it certainly does look uh, very good and as i say for uh, the price, I think it's very good. So the price of both of these microphones is $100, uh, which I think, sorry, not the microphones, the microphone stands <laughs> is $100. And I think for something like that, that's really quite uh, sturdy. As I say, I've looked at some of these types of uh, sort of underslung microphone uh, stands before, and uh, some of them are really quite pricey, sort of three or four or $500 upwards. So uh, yeah, this $99 version, I think is a uh, a good uh, a good buy it uh, looks looks good to me and uh, yeah as i say it may well be going in my shopping cart at some point in the future uh, and there's that cable management the way that the uh, the sort of things just snap in with magnets you can see the little magnets there i think it's a really elegant solution to be honest and uh, yeah looks uh, works really well it's not a totally unique thing i know others do this as well but uh, yeah it's a good uh, solution looks like it's got a good big uh, sturdy base to uh, attach it as well and uh, yeah very uh, very impressed with that one uh, it's uh, yeah, looking very good. <laughs> I'm getting distracted there. So uh, yeah, the next thing that uh, they had was uh, they've actually released a face cam or what they call face cam, which is a camera. <laughs> and it is a 1080p uh, 60 frame per second uh, uh, webcam. Uh, but it does look as though they've maybe, uh, it's actually a bit larger than it maybe looks from these images. And uh, I'm thinking that the sensor might be uh, quite a bit larger than a sort of standard webcam uh, the other thing about it is you can see it's got the uh, thread on the bottom of the cam itself uh, so that you can mount it and what I'm wondering is m wh whether maybe this might make a good replacement for my top down cam because if I just switch to my top ca down cam this is a Logitech C920 and uh, yeah the picture quality isn't great is it it's probably okay for the sorts of things I'm doing here because I don't do a lot of sort of top down shots um, but uh, the Logitech C920 the sort of uh, mounting uh, screw thread is in the the part that sits on top of the monitor whereas this the whole thing comes off that so it's a bit more of an elegant design I suppose but uh, I'm in the process of uh, just sort of figuring out what to do with my uh, my sort of little studio setup <laughs> and I will at some point be upgrading and I'll probably go all Sony to be honest with you and replace my old uh, 10 year old Canon EOS 60D but uh, more and more I'm uh, leaning towards the Sony range so I was thinking of getting a couple of uh, Sony cameras to uh, replace what I'm using at the moment. But this might well be something that I would consider uh, for the top-down cam. Uh, I do always like to have stuff that is sort of multi-purpose. And obviously this is, uh, you're not going to take it out on the road and shooting uh, footage or anything like that. It is just uh, basically a webcam, isn't it? And the price of it is $200. So um, it's uh, it's not the uh, the cheapest of cameras either for what it is, but it is, uh, it's quite an interesting product nonetheless. And uh, yeah, they do think I think have a larger sensor than uh, uh, than other ones. But uh, again, I'm not an expert on these things to be honest with you. So it's just my little humble opinions here of what I think about it. But you can see how big it is really compared to uh, an iMac. It's quite a large, uh, large uh, little thing on the uh, the top of the uh, the screen there. Uh, the other thing that is interesting about this is it does come with this camera hub software which does allow you to do a lot of the uh, sort of tweaking of the of the picture so you can change things like uh, uh, white balance and zoom obviously picture quality exposure and all those sorts of things color temperature and so on and it, you can all do that in the do that all in this app personally I use a little app called webcam settings and that just sits up in the menu bar and it looks like this so I can change my uh, uh, Logitech C920 from here and you can uh, 
add some little preferences you can change uh, zoom pan tilt things like that uh, change the uh, the color and all those sorts of things so I'll leave a link to that app in the description actually because it's quite handy if you've got a Logitech uh, web camera it allows you to get a better better quality of picture out of it uh, or any other plugged in web camera in fact uh, it works on the the max built-in eyesight uh, camera as well but only with older models interestingly I believe it doesn't work with the absolute latest Macs because they've got something in there where they basically don't want to allow third-party apps to go and uh, tinker with the webcam settings so uh, it does work with the older Macs though with my Mac in particular uh, although I rarely use the uh, the built-in eyesight camera so that is their uh, their camera and yeah I think it does look uh, quite interesting the uh, the other thing that it uh, talks about in here uh, or one of their sort of selling points if I just scroll down a little bit they talk about the sort of signal path if you like from the camera into the computer is much cleaner and so they say here you know best in class latency and zero artifacts so uh, they here what they've got is other webcams and uh, cunningly <laughs> this looks very much like a Logitech Brio the latest uh, range of Logitech cameras which are actually 4k um, so uh, yeah theirs is a uh, 1920 by 1080 whereas the Logitech Brio is 4k so I wonder how they actually really compare uh, given the fact that this is a 4k camera but the sensor may be smaller but again I don't actually know so <laughs> I'm just speculating uh, but yeah the yeah I know certainly for one thing that this uh, application that they've got up here uh, it does look a lot uh, sort of more straightforward and uh, yeah got all the things you need there the Logitech software that you can download for uh, Logitech cameras is pretty crappy really for want of a better word I've never been a fan of it so uh, yeah they've certainly yeah, certainly done that and once again if you are in the sort of Elgato ecosystem having everything all together working uh, seamlessly like this Logitech uh, sorry uh, Elgato lights, Elgato camera, Elgato mic, boom arm and everything like that all working uh, together seamlessly I can see the appeal of that to be honest so yeah another another good project uh, product I'll be really interested to hear some real world reviews of it obviously there have been people who were given these to try out uh, and they've given their own opinions of them uh, but you always have to wonder <laughs> what opinions they're going to give when they've been uh, drafted in by Elgato themselves to uh, give their opinions but we'll see what the uh, real world says about it interestingly that you'll see on uh, one of these pictures I noticed maybe it was further down there you go they've got this nice little uh, wall mount uh, I actually have my lights uh, mounted on the wall although I did it the sort of MacGyver style so I got a couple of uh, wall brackets uh, for a uh, shelves <laughs> and then I mounted on the little spigots that you get for uh, attaching uh, studio lights to and so I've got my lights mounted to the wall right in the uh, the back corners there just sort of away from the uh, the desk uh, so they're not right in my face but uh, they've now added these little wall mounts to their range of uh, uh, mountings so let me just come over to this one uh, so there is the little wall mount and you'll be able to adjust the length of this with very varying different lengths of arms and this all fits into their range of mounting arms that they've got so these are the desk mounted arms that they have and then you can basically mount things all over your desk and in fact if I just come back to this picture you can probably see uh, up here so here we've got uh, these mounting arms behind for the lights which mount onto the desk and uh, yeah you can have you know overhead cameras and all sorts mounted from this sort of mounting system so that's a nice little addition to it as well for mounting either your top-down camera your lights things like that uh, there you go you can see some sort of longer uh, arms for top-down ones for uh, in the kitchen and various other things it does give a very nice clean look I think doesn't it and keeps things off the desk as well so uh, yeah I can uh, can see why those are quite uh, uh, quite a good little product to add to the uh, uh, the the range there well that is about all for the major updates that they released they also did release a, uh, a piece of sort of software built into the website not software really a <laughs> little web interface uh, they, they call the studio configurator and that basically allows you to uh, build out your ideal studio decked out with all of the latest Elgato products uh, and uh, yeah it's just really a way for you to plan out your studio I guess and then add a load of Elgato products to your shopping list so that was quite an interesting one as well but uh, yeah uh, yeah I do think there are some good things in uh, in that release so uh, certainly the uh, the camera is one that I may be interested in for a uh, better 
quality top-down camera and uh, also that uh, underslung boom arm certainly looks good as well and maybe the XLR mic interface is, uh, is a good one to watch as well but it's up to you obviously and these are just my humble opinions and I'm sure that uh, as we learn more about these products and see more and more reviews from people who've actually got them rather than just uh, uh, an English guy in Thailand speculating on stuff just released in the US <laughs> we'll, we'll probably be able to form uh, more uh, better opinions <laughs> but if you have found this in any way interesting or useful then obviously don't forget to go and like and subscribe to the channel and if you know anybody who else who is interested in this sort of thing then do go ahead and share the channel as well if you uh, feel the need <laughs> but uh, until next time I'm going to leave it for there for this one but I will leave a link to my other Stream Deck uh, related content over in the bottom corner in that playlist until next time have a great day